Yo, what's good people? This is Anthony here with the movie blog and do you know what time it is? It's time to dissect another crazy movie and this one is batshit crazy. Today we're diving headfirst into the mind-blowing world of Boy Kills World starring Bill Skarsgård, Famke Johnson, Jessica Roth and more. And let me tell you, this movie is not what I expected. It's like Deadpool, Kill Bill, and a fever dream all got thrown into a blender. I need y'all to strap in because this movie has been around the festivals for a while and is now seeing the light of day with a wide release. This is gonna be a wild ride and you might be surprised with my final thoughts. So, Boy Kills World throws us right into the thick of things. We meet Boy, played by the ever-creepy Bill Skarsgård, a mute and deaf assassin raised by this mysterious dude named Shaman. Think The Raid, but with more weird chanting and hallucinogenic drugs. Yep, drugs and martial arts, because when do they not make an awesome combination? Boy Kills World doesn't waste time with any, you know, silly backstory, character introduction, explanation of any real value, none of that as to why Shaman is training Boy. Nope. We just see this intense training montage with everything from shurikens to bats, sticks, basically whatever Shaman can get his filthy hands on to basically train Boy. Seriously, ACS needs to say something because the way he's raising this Boy is messed up. The cast of characters is just as bizarre. We got Charlton Copley's channeling his inner villain with a hint of Michael Scott. I really like Charlton in this movie and he's just been one of my favorites to see ever since District 9. He's really fun in this movie and it feels like he's just having a lot of fun with it too. Then there's this badass biker chick with the serious case of helmet hair called June 27. June is awesome and is played by Jessica Roth in this film. For all my Kill Bill fans, June is basically the Oren Ishii of this movie in that she's the muscle and doesn't need a lot of effort to clear a rule. She has a pretty sweet introduction as she just acts as the bodyguard for Gideon and Glenn when they're out trying to collect villagers for the annual culling. Her character goes through a tremendous amount of growth in this movie and I really like what we learn about her later in the movie. And then there's Boy's ever-present hallucination of his dead sister. Now, I have mixed feelings about her because the movie intentionally withholds an explanation of why Boy is deaf and mute and why he's seeing this hallucination of his dead sister. I mean, we learn why later in the movie, but this is one of those characters and those instances where I feel like the destination doesn't fully justify the journey, if you know what I mean. She's fine for the most part, but she did leave my head scratching with her appearances and her annoying suggestions for Boy more than once to just chill out and stop being so violent. Like, do you know what kind of movie we're trying to see here? Stop trying to stop this man. Now, the action. The action makes up for a lot in this movie. I mean, the fight choreography is top notch. It's brutal, it's bloody, and it's gonna leave you wincing more than once. I mean, seriously, I will not look at a cheese grater the same way thanks to that kitchen fight scene. There's an almost overwhelming amount of action scenes in this movie that by the time we get to the final, final fight, Yo, for real, I felt exhausted. I mean, how could these characters have anything left in the tank after everything we just saw? The movie just does not let up and there's a constant sense of danger from beginning to end and Boy's journey for revenge is anything but easy. Now, Boy Kills World is not a perfect movie. The pacing slows down in the middle of the movie and Boy's inner monologuing voiced by H. John Benjamin can get a little annoying after a while. Plus, there is some plot holes so big you could drive a truck through them. But just when you think you've got the movie figured out, ow, it throws some massive twists your way. I mean, 
I'm a little apprehensive to say everything, even in this spoiler review. So let's save some for the comments and just say there's a whole lot of family drama going on. And Shaman, yo, my guy Shaman is not the guy we thought he was. Or actually he is. Kind of. Damn. There's also my issue with the way that this movie handles black people. Like, listen, black people don't need to be the focus of the movie, but they also don't need to be stereotyped or minstrel either. I felt like the way that this movie handled Benny, played by Isaiah Mustafa, was more than a little unnecessary. Why can't Boy understand Benny? Why is everything he says unintelligible to the point that it's weaned into the plot so that Boy doesn't understand the plan to infiltrate the Vanderkoy bunker? That whole thing is bad taste in my opinion, and even a little offensive. Just why? So overall, Boy Kills World is a roller coaster of action, dark humor, and WTF moments. It's not for everyone, but if you're looking for something insane, gory, and utterly unique, this is your movie. Just don't go in expecting a deep story and be prepared for the insensitive use of Betty the black guy in the movie. So yeah, that's my take on Boy Kills World. Overall, I'm giving this movie a 7 out of 10, although I should deduct some points for the use of Benny. Did you guys love it, hate it, or are you still confused? Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Anyway, that's all I have for this review of Boy Kills World. If you're new here, make sure you sub like, subscribe, comment, and check out more videos and movie badness. Until next time, keep it creepy. Peace.